But let's catch up with Sophie Ellsworth now. He's the media writer at the Australian newspaper. Lots to talk about in the Australian media this week, Sophie. And you've been all over it. How about the ABC, that, that horribly divisive stuff out of Alice Springs where they tried to uh, portray a, a town meeting of concerned citizens as some sort of racially divisive uh, meeting of white supremacists? At least they finally had to apologise late last week. Well, Chris, this was hugely embarrassing for the public broadcaster. Uh, they've smeared the Alice Springs community as if it's, uh, you know, laden with white supremacists. It was just absolutely outrageous. Uh, by Wednesday last week, they were sticking by the reports, but by late Friday night, after immense pressure... Uh, they backed down and apologised profusely for these articles. Now, I asked the ABC uh, many questions about how this happened. Where were the editorial checks, Chris? Uh, yes, a reporter did a lot of the work there on the ground, but where is the hierarchy at the ABC? Because there's no shortage of staff there. And there's numerous articles that remain on the ABC's platforms, including social media, where they're still airing these white supremacy claims with no disclaimer yeah. or correction or amendment. So it's hugely concerning, Chris. And, and nothing to substantiate it either, except a couple of people saying something crazy. Here's a little bit of what the ABC has broadcast. We spoke to several attendees. Some non-Indigenous people said the meeting was distressing. Others incited violence against Aboriginal people. It's just a total white supremacist fest in there. And I'll tell you what, the vibe, it was scary. Good Lord. Now, of course, uh, Sophie, this report was done by uh, an Eastern States-based reporter. We saw her there in the Indigenous uh, uh, flag earrings. So that overrides the local reporters who actually understand what's going on in, in the ground. And apparently all of this has caused some ructions within the ABC. It absolutely has, Chris. I've spoken to people on the ground in Alice Springs uh, and they're absolutely livid about how this happened because in a small community like that, it takes a lot of trust with local media. You build it up over years and it's effectively been trashed in the space of a few reports uh, that effectively came out of Sydney. Now, this is going to go to the board level. Uh, they will discuss this at the upcoming board meeting. David Anderson and Ita Buttrose are under immense pressure pressure to deal with this. This story and the fallout is far from over, Chris. Well, just two things I'd add to that, Sophie. One is, if they're going to have a board meeting on these issues, the board should also look at this story and talk about an apology. Tonight, we begin our special three-part investigation into the story of the century, the election of US President Donald Trump and his ties to Russia. The Kremlin's puppet master now has America dancing to his discordant tune. He couldn't have planned it better. Yes, yeah, Sophie, I always... Uh, three hours, three separate hours of four corners. I reckon at least a million dollars of taxpayers' money spent on this nonsense that Putin put Trump into the White House. They still haven't apologised for that. And also, they, the board ought to ask their managing director why he hasn't followed through on this. And I have been waiting for you to invite me onto your programme. Any time. Yeah. That's so, a standing invitation. All right. Well. Well, I've actually, we've sent requests in in the past. Right. Well, we'll make that we've date soon. Up. Okay. All right. Have, have, a, good have a good day, Chris. Bye. See ya. You remember it well, Sophie. There he is. He says he'll talk and answer questions about the ABC, but he's never fronted. Never fronted. It's just outrageous. And speaking about the board, tell us about the shenanigans, not just Laura Tingle, but Indira Naidu now, running for this staff-elected uh, staff uh, spot on the board. That's right, Chris. Uh, she's obviously very high profile in the ABC. Uh, she's coming up against Laura Tingle, who's also vying for that spot. Uh, but she's really uh, got a, a, a one of the avenues that she will be fighting is that she doesn't believe that ABC staff, 75% of them in fact, should be moving from Ultimo out to Parramatta. That is going to be a real winner within the staff at the ABC in Sydney because, as we know, Chris, they don't want to be out in the burbs. They want to be in the inner city where they find it very comfortable. They don't want to be uh, hiking it out to the west. So yeah. I think she could do quite well in the vote. She's a good egg, Indira. I've known Indira and I do not very well, but for a long, long while. She's from Narracourt in South Australia. Australia originally. Have a look just on that point, though, what she said about the commute if they move uh, Radio National and other staff out to pa uh, Parramatta. It'll put acute daily commuting pressures on staff. That says it all, doesn't it, Sophie? 
They all want to live in the inner city. They don't want to have to go to Parramatta. Why wouldn't their staff actually live near Parramatta? Well, it's not fancy enough, Chris, to put it quite bluntly. And this is one of the big problems with the ABC. They want to live in a 5, 10k radius of the city. And if they don't, they get upset about it. I reckon we all should get a vote. Not just the staff at the ABC. We all fund it. We all should get a vote for who's on the board. Thanks for joining us, Sophie. I appreciate it.